Very little up there, huh? Yeah, so like this is good as far as installing the window goes. There's there's a gap here, which is something for sure. But like in some of the other windows, the window and the foam had become separate somehow. Right, yeah. But that's not up here. But I worry about in here, yeah. uh, from here to here. There's nothing to stop anything there. <coughs> but Yeah. Like if like this, the exterior is like close to there, right? Yeah. Just outside yeah. there. So there's like a, like at least from this plastic into here. Like, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Just then it cold can't get in anywhere. Yeah. But yeah, there is a gap here, which I haven't seen a gap like that before. Uh, but I'll do that, and then I've been doing. Like from here to here, kind of before I put this in, right, and then slide this in, and then do it again, right. And there's a little spot underneath here you can't see from down there, but there's just a foam to puff up, right, so it needs a spot. Yeah. Okay. And this build out will have to get tapered. Yep. But One more time. It's all right. One more time, and then yeah. one left. Yeah, exactly. The last two windows. That's yeah. a big deal. So this is Roland uh, from East Marsh Acres, and uh, we're looking at finishing up the um, uh, the project, uh, or getting close to, anyways. Um, so yesterday, Chris took out uh, the two windows up above him. Um, and uh, was able to actually get them all sealed up and put everything back together again. So they're in much better shape than they were before. And he also <laughs> took off the uh, um, the stickers that were still on the windows, etc. So they're <laughs> we don't have to deal with the uh, new windows anymore. Um, after two years, uh, I don't know how new you can actually call them anyways. Um, it, you can see that uh, there's a fair amount of space and Chris was just outlining the, the uh, issues that we're having there. So the last four windows up there and then tomorrow uh, baseboards and uh, troublesome areas around the kitchen, etc. Um, and then this project will be done. All right. Sounds good. Uh, so I'll update you uh, when we get uh, further news. Um, and. Uh, uh, tag this along with the rest of the, uh, the videos that I've been collecting over the last two weeks. Thanks. Talk to you soon. Hi, it's Roland from East Marsh Acres again. Uh, just another f update. So we've got both of the casings off uh, for the windows up there. And uh, we're, I, I, I guess uh, Chris has actually filled in uh, foam around the windows already. At least I can see it. Um, not totally set yet because there are still some spaces that I can see up there in that one. Um, and a few little ones up there. So he still has some work to do, but he's, right now, he's working on, uh, it's a bit of a disorganized mess in here. Are still working, but he's, uh, I think, just priming uh, the outside of one of the boxes that will be placed up there. So we're getting there. Um, very quickly coming to an end. Uh, he expects to be finished tomorrow, um, so we'll need to finish off a few uh, uh, baseboards and uh, other places where. Um, 
some trim needs to be finished, and etc. So we're we're getting there. Thanks. We'll keep you up to date and uh, talk to you soon. Good morning. It's Roland Benosvain from East Marsh Acres, and uh, this is the last day of renovations. And I, I just thought that maybe I should actually give a little bit of uh, background as to uh, why we're doing all of these uh, renovations in essentially what is a new house or is a house that was uh, constructed um, less than two years ago. Uh, and the reason is that uh, we ended up having some issues with our general contractor um, that uh, uh, wasn't uh, he, he wasn't making timely progress uh, we ended up having issues with quality obviously um, and uh, there were a number of similar kinds of things so uh, essentially we um, when we got to a certain point ie delivery of the uh, garage doors um, we ended up um, saying uh, thank you very much um, get your materials out of here and uh, leave and as a consequence, we ended up with some uh, issues in terms of quality, uh, particularly in finishes. Um, there's probably some other issues that we need to uh, take care of as well, but uh, uh, we'll address those as we're going along. Um, there, there, we know that there are some, some problems in terms of siding, uh, finish on the siding, um, and all those kinds of pieces. But uh, today we're actually finishing off with the finishes on the inside of the house. Um, so over the last few days, you've seen us uh, doing the restorations of the casing and the finishes around the doors. So this particular one is in the living room. Um, today, uh, Chris is actually working on baseboards. So this particular baseboard he's removed because it was not... Um, uh, complete in, in the right way. So we've been doing things like uh, finishing off the, uh, the the actual little little things like caulking in the uh, the corner here in this one. He finished off the celestry windows uh, up here, all four of them, yesterday, and you can see that they've been repainted. Uh, they're ready to go. He, he built himself a a bit of a platform. Um, and you can see some of the nail holes still that will need to be uh, covered over and uh, painted again. Um, so he's working primarily on uh, baseboards and finishes in the kitchen, etc. So I'll show you some of those. So here again, there was uh, a butt joint uh, in the middle of this particular baseboard. Um, no idea why, uh, but... Uh, so he's taking the entire baseboard off and we'll be replacing it. Um, here's another piece that he's going to put a piece of MDF on the top and then we'll paint it. Um, he'll be building a box around the uh, uh, microwave here, uh, redoing the caulking here that's come loose for whatever reason. Not sure why that's actually occurred. Um, here we've got a piece of, of tape that's come loose. I don't know if you can see it here. So he'll be reapplying that. Um, doing things like we've got a door that does not close. Um, so finishing that particular piece. There's another baseboard that he's replacing. Uh, there's caulking. So here in this particular 45 um, none in here, but he'll be doing some replacing of materials here. So this one, that one's probably going to be caulked as well. Replacing this one, which, which looks pretty ugly, down beside the toilet, across this area. Um, this door is uh, coming loose so fixing this piece here as much as possible um, and then there's a variety of small little things so this one 
This uh, has a joint right in the middle of it. It's not particularly closed. And in the corner, it's uh, not completed either. Um, here's a piece of baseboard that's missing. Here's a piece of baseboard that's missing right on the bottom. Uh, and uh, just doing caulking uh, at the bottom of the door here just to fill everything in. There's some caulking that'll be done outside as well. Uh, we'll go around uh, after he's finished, uh, so he'll be finished today, and uh, just let you see uh, all of the bits and pieces that uh, have been worked on. And uh, um, basically, it's not only aesthetics, but for all of the windows and doors, uh, the problem was that uh, this house is um, supposed to be close to uh, what are referred to as net zero standards or passive house standards, which means essentially that uh, the uh, amount of energy that's brought in from the outside for heating, for cooking purposes, for lighting, all of those kinds of things is um, very minimal. And uh, if you take a look at the way that the, the house is constructed, um, our heating source is uh, a series of um, essentially blow dryers in the concrete pad on the first floor. Um, that pad is uh, heated um, and, and it's maintained that temperature uh, throughout the winter. Uh, so we have those coils uh, creating uh, heat that is uh, making hot air that is blown by little fans uh, around through the concrete itself and then the rest of that heat um, is given off uh, on a constant basis uh, to the rest of the house and so the only heating source that we actually have uh, on all the time is the concrete pad downstairs um, and it does a very good job of ensuring that uh, all of the house is maintained around 21 degrees or so. Um, if you take a look at the thermo thermometer that's right there, it says 22 degrees uh, at this point in time uh, internally, and so that's coming from the uh, the heat source down in the uh, in the first floor. That also means that you have to have a very well insulated building, and it has to be airtight uh, from the perspective that you do not want to have um, cold air uh, in the winter or hot air during the summer coming in from the outside and manipulating the environment uh, in any way shape or form so you want to be able to actually control uh, egress and ingress of uh, air and so that's one of the reasons why we actually have the um, heat recovery ventilation system as well so if you take a look at the wall there right in the middle of the wall you'll see that circular uh, piece and that is to control the, um, the the air that's coming back from the heat recovery ventilation system down in the first floor um, and it is uh, continually circulating the uh, the air and maintaining humidity as well um, so air does move uh, in a completely sealed house but uh, we try to keep the uh, changes between the inside and the outside uh, to an absolute minimal minimum. And so what Chris was working on was trying to uh, fix uh, the windows and doors, uh, the spaces around the windows and doors where air was leaking in um, back and forth between the environment outside. Uh, every one of the windows and doors had a problem. Um, they were not sealed totally. Some were better than others, but uh, we had him in not only to fix the aesthetics, to fix up the, um, and, and you can see how uh, nicely uh, the window up there uh, looks now, because um, it had oversized uh, um, casing around it uh, earlier, and uh, we've been able to replace it with casing that's exactly the same size as everywhere else in the house now. Uh, so it's looking uniform but it's also airtight so we're not going to be getting any air movement uh, around any of the windows or doors um, except when we want to open them and uh, 
that was the main uh, reason for what we're doing. Um, what I will do is at some point in the future, I'll give a, uh, um, a rundown as to what are the uh, inputs that we actually have. So in other words, what is the electricity? So the only energy in uh, inputs that we have to this house are coming from uh, electricity. Uh, so we're in a net metered system. Um, so that means that the uh, metering uh, as to how much electricity that we're using is taken care of by the meter that's sitting on the post outside. I'll show it to you in a second. And uh, we're also uh, generating uh, electricity from the solar grid that's above my head here uh, on the roof of the house. And uh, we've got a 13 kilowatt, 13 point something or other, four I think, uh, kilowatt hour uh, solar panel array upstairs that we can generate um, 10 kilowatt hours that we actually sell back to uh, Hydro One um, and we get a, uh, a credit for the amount of energy that we're actually putting back into the system and that is uh, offsetting uh, much of our costs for the electricity. We want to get as close as we possibly can to net zero, i.e. the cost of the energy coming in, the electricity coming in, will be uh, equaled out by the cost of the uh, power that we're actually generating back to the grid as well. Um, I'll have to do a uh, full analysis of that. What I'm ho hoping for is a full year of uh, data uh, so you can see what the costs are uh, for the electricity coming in and what we're actually getting credit for for the electricity that we're generating back to um, the, uh, the grid. And of course the uh, less that we actually lose uh, of heat to the outside environment the better off we're going to be in terms of how much less energy that we'll need to actually uh, consume. Um, so there are discrepancies. I mean, if you take a look at my computer systems downstairs, they generate a fair amount of heat, uh, which is above and beyond the heat that's actually being provided by the um, uh, pieces underneath. And uh, uh, so there there are some variations, etc. cetera. But, uh, um, that's where we're heading and I'd like to do a full year calculation and it'll be a little while before we get that because we had some problems last year with the inverter on the uh, on the solar array and we had to uh, replace that so we lost about a month or so uh, while we're waiting for replacement parts um, so it'll be probably until July of this year that we'll have a full year of uh, generation and then we'll see um, exactly what our costs are versus uh, the the amount of uh, credit that we're actually getting and that'll give us a good estimate of how close we are to um, paying nothing for electricity that's where we'd like to get to um, and thereby reducing our carbon footprint uh, totally as well um, anyways, that brings us up to date in terms of what we're doing. Uh, again, I'll go around at the end of the day and show you what uh, Chris was able to uh, accomplish and uh, keep you up to date. Thank you. Talk to you soon. It's uh, Roland from East Mars Acres and I'm here to just finish up the uh, video recording of the, uh, the interior work, the trim work that uh, was done over the last uh, two and a half weeks and uh, to essentially wrap up that project. Um, so I'm just going to start here and uh, I've shown you the window before. Uh, so all of the trim that we've done around the window, uh, Trishy has yet to um, paint around here yet for yes, a second time. Oh, you did already. Well okay, yesterday yeah. while I was not here. Um, the baseboard down here was replaced because there was a, uh, uh, this is one of the places where there was a, okay, it's a sh shorter length and yet there was a joint in it. Uh, so we've eliminated that and the top of the uh, uh, baseboard has been um, caulked as well. Um, we've got new caulking here and it's completely sealed up. So you see where the uh, countertop actually meets the wall. Um, this 
window has been totally finished again. Uh, not we, we, <laughs> yeah, we hit, still have to repaint the ship lap and get the uh, shelf up. The shelves up. But that's why I'm in painting clothes because I'm going to paint along around the windows today and uh, get this floor. Yeah, done. we're still a little bit <laughs> on the chaotic side of things. Uh, there's paint and plants uh, that need to be replaced, etc. Yeah. Um, but let me go around. So this window was totally rebuilt. Uh, this one was totally rebuilt and I showed you the build out that we had to put in here um, because uh, there was a little bit more distance in the actual box itself. This box comes out from the wall and it's uh, um, beyond the where the ship lap actually is. Same thing on the other side. Uh, so it was rebuilt all the way along the top and the sides. But it's now completely finished. So we've got a new piece of uh, baseboard down there as well. Um, the, uh, this particular um, door frame was not touched because uh, there's nothing wrong with it. The window up there was redone. You can just see it. I'm not going to take the, window, uh, the um, ladder out to go and see that. Um, so we retouched the caulking on uh, all of this. This door was completely finished as well. In fact, this one came out and uh, it, it's been finished uh, and, and we're quite happy with it. Um, one small thing that we did notice is that there's a little bit of caulking here that needs to be done yet. Let me see if I can get that. Um, it's about, uh, what, three feet in, in length or so. Um, but the rest of it looks really, really good. And it works now as it should. Closes and locks. Uh, obviously some painting has to happen yet because uh, there's still some nail holes and things. That one needs to be covered yet. The window up there is also complete. Uh, it ha now has a three and a half inch rather than a seven or whatever it was uh, before and the build out of the wall. So now it's uh, all flush and uh, it's uh, much better than it was before. Um, this window as well was rebuilt. And finally, this window was rebuilt as well. The four Celestri windows up there uh, were also rebuilt, uh, washed, and we finally got the stickers um, from the new win windows. Uh, the stickers were taken off, so uh, that's a good thing to uh, have happen. And let me just go into the guest room. In here we rebuilt uh, a little bit of the baseboards. Um, I don't think there was a lot to do in here, um, but there's one or two that was, need to be replaced. And this entire window was rebuilt as well. Uh, so that it was uh, totally packed and uh, new. Um, the casing was uh, placed on it again. Um, so that window wasn't touched. This one was above the toilet. So it was totally rebuilt as well. And the baseboards that were left by the electricians, uh, not in complete fashion, were also uh, finished down here. And this uh, door frame, casing around the door frame, uh, pocket door, was also epoxied. So now it's uh, it, it was open here before, and now it's uh, totally sealed in, and that baseboard is joined to it. Um, this piece of baseboard here was also replaced and totally cocked, so top and the bottom. So I don't think that we'll have any more issues with it. This baseboard 
was caulked as well. And I don't think there's anything else here that needs to be redone. And then finally in our bedroom. So the, this piece of uh, baseboard was completely uh, replaced because again it had a joint in it and it's a relatively shorter run so we could actually have a complete piece. That piece of baseboard was uh, replaced and there's this piece uh, to the so from the from the window itself just slippers out of here from the window to the wall was replaced as well because there's a joint there as well a small little one and the entire window was totally rebuilt as well so it's complete now and it too works where it didn't before so now we can actually seal and have a tight seal so that we don't end up with with the uh, winter air coming in to the bedroom all right uh, very briefly go downstairs just to finish off all of the work that was done So this door was totally redone as well, unpacked and then repacked, new casing around it for uh, refit anyways, and then um, caulked all the way around. Um, this doorway is now much uh, more weatherproof than it was before. We're still having a little bit of an issue up here in the corner. Um, and uh, really what's happening is that the door doesn't fit directly against the um, weather stripping here so i don't know if i can put a little bit of weather stripping here at the top of the door and just get it to uh, fit tightly see it it uh, rocks a little bit just at the top nowhere else so i don't know if that means that the door was bent or that the frame was bent a little bit something along those lines um, this window was rebuilt as well and uh, you can see that on previous parts of the clip um, no baseboards down here two windows in Trisha's studio were totally rebuilt my messy messy studio <laughs> yeah uh, I just had an art show um, put up and everything in town for First Friday Peterborough. So yes, it's it's a mess as I was organizing and trying to get things together. So <laughs> excuse it. And this window was totally rebuilt as well. You can see the caulking up in the corner. Uh, plants have uh, been replaced back to where they were before. And the window in my office was totally rebuilt as well. So now you can see that it's totally sealed up. And Trisha was able to actually uh, paint it as well. So now it's got nice white um, casing around the entire piece. And finally, um, so there is some baseboard work that was done here. Uh, yep. So let me, you want to just hold on to this a second? Just pull it out a second. Take a look. The baseboard down here is much neater um, so that we have it complete up into the dryer vent. The dryer vent, uh, so uh, I, don't, I don't know if I've ever talked about the dryer vent, but uh, the way that this works is that uh, we can detach the dryer vent and put that board that you're seeing there uh, over top of the outside. It's attached to, I made a styrofoam plug to actually fit into 
the, uh, the dryer vent itself so that uh, we will minimize the amount of uh, air leakage that we're getting through the dryer vent. Uh, on the outside we have a, uh, uh, a flap um, that uh, opens when the air pressure uh, goes out. But uh, this way, whenever we need to use the dryer, all we do is pull out the, uh, the, the actual plug itself and then we have a flexible hose attached to a plug that has a um, magnet on it and when we bring the magnet closer to the vent itself I don't know if you can see it, it's already rising and it will attach directly so it makes a connection and then we can use the dryer and when we're finished with the dryer just pull the dryer apart uh, back a little bit I need to put it on a uh, caster or a roller or something and we put the plug back into the hole and uh, cover it up so the way that works um, this window again was uh, completely rebuilt uh, needs painting and this door was probably one of the more uh, problematic doors that we had and uh, we totally rebuilt it as well and it'll need some painting but it's uh, totally sealed up and insulated now and it no longer causes problems um, by binding along here which the old one was actually doing um, so we're really happy with the work that Chris did. Uh, this is work that should have been done um, in the first instance of uh, the house itself. Um, but our general contractor was not particularly good at finishing details. And consequently, we didn't end up with the, uh, the kind of finish that we really need. Um, one of the issues that we have in this house, and I, again, uh, mean to actually do a full uh, scale treatment of uh, the kind of house that we're building here, which is, uh, can be described as being uh, near net zero. So what we're trying to do there, as I described earlier, is to um, ensure that uh, energy inputs uh, equal to the amount of energy that we're actually using so that we um, are, are going to be paying uh, very little if not zero for the amount of electricity that we're actually bringing in. Um, there are no other inputs in terms of energy products uh, that we're bringing into this particular house. No petroleum products, no gas products, none of that. Uh, uh, so we're running spe specifically solely on electricity here. Uh, the water heater is ele electrical. The heat under the floor is electrical. The, um, the pump to the well is electrical. Um, the uh, ventilation system it runs off of electricity, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Everything runs off of electricity. Um, so eventually we'll get to the point where we actually uh, can swap out the uh, net metering so that our connection to the grid and uh, replace it with battery backup and then run specifically off of the solar array in the up upstairs. To get there, to get to net zero means that you have to have a very airtight house. So all of the windows and doors need to be airtight and that was what was missing. And so we undertook um, the, the work that Chris did to uh, finish off as much as we possibly can uh, the air tightness of the house itself. Um, I still need to do a test of where we're actually losing heat um, and I think there are a couple of places that need to be addressed yet. One of them being the vent, uh, the range hood above the uh, stove uh, but other than that, I think we're pretty close to being as airtight as we can get. Um, and and uh, 
therefore we should uh, also be very close to passive standards. I'll define all of that uh, when I actually create a uh, more full-scale treatment uh, for all of these things. Um, in the meantime, I think that it wraps this particular uh, set of videos up a little bit longer than what we normally do, but uh, um, gives you a good overview, I think, of the kind of work that we did, uh, had Chris do over the last two and a half weeks. And uh, we'll be starting in on the spring summer season very, very shortly because we have um, chickens, so some replacement chickens, uh, egg layers, uh, coming in, I think, this next week. And uh, we'll need to um, get them uh, on, on their growth pattern. Uh, we'll bring them inside for a little while for uh, heating purposes, etc., to keep them warm. And uh, then we'll start introducing them uh, outside. We have uh, meat chickens that we're going to be bringing in uh, for this year. And uh, we need to build a um, Sukovich type uh, tractor uh, for them so that we can bring the, uh, the, the meat chickens around uh, from place to place on a daily basis. So moving them from one place to the next place um, and keeping them within the actual confines of the, uh, the tractor. We'll, we'll show you what that looks like uh, in a little bit. Uh, we're getting the plans off of other, other homesteaders, uh, mainly in the United States. Um, we also have the garden to plant. Uh, Trisha needs to do a segment on all of the planting that she's done, the seeds and uh, the, the starts that she's going to be putting in. Uh, all of those in things are yet to come. And so we will have a busy uh, spring, summer, and fall season uh, coming up. Uh, and, and you'll get a little bit more regular uh, videos as a consequence. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.